Hi everybody, today's focus is traveling with food allergies. So today's video is going to be a bit more personal than my cleaning videos. I really wanted to share with you how I travel with a child who has life-threatening food allergies. One of my boys has life-threatening food allergies to dairy, eggs, peanuts, shellfish, and medicinal gelatin. I've had to administer an EpiPen on a few occasions due to cross-contamination, a child who had eaten his allergens had spit in his face causing an anaphylactic reaction, and he also had an anaphylactic reaction to a vaccine. His allergies are so severe that he has never eaten at a restaurant. He only eats food that I prepare or his dad prepares or that he prepares himself. Despite all this, we try to, as a family, have fun vacations. So I think I have it down pretty well on how to have a fun road trip with a child with food allergies. We have never tried to fly on a plane because I do bring all of his food that he needs to eat with us while we're traveling. So we only go on road trips. So we just got back from a two week long road trip. So I'm gonna share with you what it is that I did to keep him safe during this trip. The first thing I do when I'm planning a road trip is I make a list of foods that are safe, things that he's eaten at home over and over and over again that travel well. Once we've chosen the foods and have a nice list, we just purchase the foods enough to last us. I do more than enough days um, of our vacation. So for this particular trip, I had to have enough breakfast, lunches, dinners, and snacks for two weeks. Since we were on a road trip, I do know that I could stop at a grocery store and pick up snack foods, but I didn't want to take the chance and have the grocery stores we go to not have the very specific brand foods that I know are safe for him. So I wanted to make sure I brought with me at least every single dinner that he was going to eat. The next thing I do is I search for hotels that have a microwave and a refrigerator that fits five people. This is critical for us. I, I don't always need a refrigerator because I have a real beefy cooler that will keep everything ice cold for a long time and just refilling with ice is super easy. So the next thing I do is I create a bin that I call the hotel bin. Since we were on a road trip, we had a lot of bags in the car. Uh, sometimes we didn't need them though for every single hotel stop. For example, we had a, a bag for going to the beach and a bag for going to swimming pools that didn't need to go into every hotel that we stopped in for a night. But every hotel that we stopped in, I needed to bring in my hotel bin. So I keep a folded white fitted sheet in a gallon Ziploc bag. That way, if there isn't a clean place for him to sit, I can put a cover over a chair and he can sit there without worry about any cross-contamination of any food that might be on that chair from previous um, people who stayed at the hotel. So I bring one or two packs of Clorox wipes with me and I wipe down every surface of the hotel room that I feel he is going to touch. I wipe down the end table next to the bed, all the light switches, all the faucet handles, all the tables. I take special care to scrub the microwave as well as the refrigerator. Then I take paper towels and I line the refrigerator that I had just cleaned with Clorox wipes with paper towels. So if anything that we have, if we put any drinks in it or any food in it, it sits on the paper towels and not on the refrigerator. We also use paper towels throughout the vacation anyway to wipe things up or to lay on a table so that he can have his plate of food on top of a paper towel on a table. Most of the hotels that we stayed at for this particular road trip had a separate like little kitchenette area. A lot of them were um, Spring Hill Suites by Marriott. And so they had like a small area with a sink in a microwave and refrigerator. So I bring a dish soap and I do store it in a Ziploc so it doesn't leak all over my bin. And I bring three sponges, okay? One sponge is the one that I use for my allergic child's utensils and plates and bowls. A second sponge is in case anyone else in my family eats something and they need to wash something, I'm not using his sponge with it because Oftentimes we will eat his allergics while we're on vacation. So I don't want to be cross contaminating his clean sponge with a sponge that may have been used with, uh, so let's say cheese or something. And then I bring an extra sponge. 
I also bring my own hand soap. Uh, for this particular road trip was two weeks. I brought two of these uh, the sized hand soaps and we used all of one and part of another. Uh, this is important for us because oftentimes soap will have milk in it and I can't trust the hotel soap to not be allergy free. We don't want any rashes, we don't want any reactions, we don't want any extra eczema, so we bring our own hand soap. I bring a dish towel. Um, I'll just use my own dish towel to dry dishes instead of using a paper towel. I also have a small cutting board and knife that I bring with me, and that's mostly so that my son can eat fresh fruit, I can cut up fresh fruit in a safe way for him. Also in the hotel bin, I keep some paper bowls and some washable plates and paper plates. Sometimes um, a microwave to me is really grimy and I can't seem to get it clean very well or I'm just not feeling good about it. Like I can smell the food when I open it. In which case, I would take one of these really cheap thin paper plates and lay it in the microwave first and then I can put his food, and I'll show you the food we do in a minute. I could put his food bowl on top of that to keep it safe. I also keep in this bin some blue painter's tape and a Sharpie. I will make a sign and tape it to the exterior of the door that says no housekeeping. Um, no, I word it nicely, so you know, no housekeeping please. We have a child with specific medical needs. You know, and I write something like that on a piece of paper and I will tape it to the door. And I do that because do not disturb signs can fly off um, you know, the handles pretty easily. And I need to make sure that housekeeping isn't going to come into the room and wipe down the surfaces with their rag they just cleaned another room with and recontaminate our room that I had just cleaned. So what I do is I really make sure I clean our room. Um, I take the trash out. I bring um, some extra small like trash bags with me just four gallon size like bathroom trash bags and I find that I have no problem at all taking our trash because we do make more trash than probably most guests because we do use paper plates and I am I am bringing his food and, and packaging needs to be thrown away. So what I'll do is I'll just put our trash in our own bag and I will walk it to a trash bin or leave it outside the room so that housekeeping doesn't come into our room to clean up. If we need new towels, I could just call down. They can bring up towels. I can leave the old towels outside the door. It's pretty simple. Actually, now with the way things are with COVID, most hotels that I checked into told me that there was no housekeeping unless you were staying five, five days or more. So it wasn't an issue this time for us, which was really good. I also keep a bag of quart size Ziplocs and gallon size Ziploc bags. This is primarily to help me refill ice for my big cooler. So what I usually do is I'll fill the quart bags with ice, put them inside a gallon Ziploc, and then fill the cooler with it. On occasion during this road trip, we did just get like those with a 10 or 16 pound bags of ice and just dump them into the cooler. That worked fine too, but I'm just filling up a little bit from a hotel like just to refresh the ice. I find that just using a quart bag inside a gallon bag is just fine. Is one other thing that I put in my hotel bin that I just don't have with me right now because we just got back home and I'll put a picture of it somewhere over here. Just a plastic tablecloth. Um, you can bring as many of them as you think you need. Not a big deal. They're so thin and they stack really easily in, in a big bin like this. You can put a whole bunch in there. And what I'll do is I'll lay that plastic tablecloth over a table that I designate to be a spot where my allergic child can sit and eat. The last thing that I keep in my hotel bin is a, just a styrofoam coffee cup and some instant coffees just for me. So that's the content of my hotel bin. Second bin that's critical for us to bring into a hotel is the breakfast and dinner bin. For this road trip, we ended up by driving total like over 5,000 miles. We went to 20 states. Uh, we drove maybe eight-ish hours a day, in doing, stopping and doing things along the way. We were getting into our hotel probably about 8.30 at night and then leaving by eight in the morning. So I knew I needed to have quick dinner and breakfast ready for my allergic guy. So this is what I have in my breakfast and dinner bin. I do have a couple of cheap paper plates that I keep with me. Remember, one will go in the microwave so I can set his bowls on that without worrying about cross-contamination. And then these little ones, they're really small, I put over his bowl. Um, 
again, to reduce the risk of cross-contamination. I also have in this bin um, plastic utensils. I have forks, spoons, and knives. I will wash these and put them back in unless we are running like really hectic and I'll just throw them away if I'm running like crazy hectic and I don't have time to do it. And then for dinner, um, for this particular trip, I had a couple different options. The easiest thing were to use these complete meals. Um, he liked the Dinty Moore soup the best, so he had maybe five nights of eating the Dinty Moore stew. They're just 60 seconds in the microwave. Easy. And then we also had a couple other complete Hormel meals. Now I know that these are not like the healthiest options in the world and it's not home cooked meal. Like I get that and I know that, but for vacation, um, for a child with food allergies, you have to have food that they can eat that's safe. And if it's a little higher in sodium than you normally would like them to eat, you just have to deal with that. And that's the way it is. So what I would do is I would, so I have my plate, I would unpackage it, you have to vent it, put it in the microwave. I would leave the plate in the microwave when it beeped. I would have someone else open the microwave door so I'm not contaminating my hands at all. Then I would take his meal and put it in this bowl, just like that, and give that to him to eat. The second option he had for dinner was chicken and rice. So this is just canned chicken and water. So I could just drain out the water, put it in a bowl, microwave and heat that up, take that out, and then you put this entire packet of 90 second rice in the microwave and he had a nice chicken and rice meal. Pretty simple. The last thing I have in my breakfast and dinner bin is his breakfast. So I would have a bottle of water and that is used to make his oatmeal. He likes the maple and brown sugar oatmeal. I have his bowl. I would just prepare his oatmeal, put it in the microwave. I would cover it with one of these plates in the microwave to make it nice and safe for him. And so that's what he would have for breakfast. So each evening before we went into the next hotel, we would need to refill the dinner and breakfast bin, right? I would have to put in new rice or new Dinty Moore stews or and, and oatmeal packs. Super easy though to just refill. So I kept in the car what I called the refill bin. Let me show you that. So this is the refill bin and this stayed in the car the entire time. We did not need to bring this into hotel rooms at all. We would just take the things out of here, put it in the breakfast and dinner bin to bring inside. Since the breakfast and dinner bin had his plates and fork spoons and knives, and there wasn't enough room to put all the food in for the entire trip. So I worked it like that. Pretty easy. Um, I had extra oatmeal packets in here extra rices, extra chickens, and extra Dinty Moore complete meals. So that covers dinner and breakfast for the overnight stay at the hotel. But we also had lunches that had to be covered also. Most lunches we ate on the road as we were going from place to place. So we have what's called the lunch bin. And this stays primarily in the car. So lunch bin doesn't have everything in it that we actually ate just because we ate a lot of stuff and I didn't want to like fill it just for this. So it looks a little empty, but that's okay. It has wet ones in it to remind him and everyone else really to wipe your hands well before you eat. And it usually had um, the allergy safe bread that we get in here. So that's why there's a lot of space in here. It was mostly so that the bread didn't get smushed, okay? Um, I had cans of deviled ham. Sometimes my allergic guy didn't eat these, but I did for a quick lunch. Um, we had like Chex Mix to go with the sandwich as well as beef jerky. Also we had the cooler and in the cooler we had safe uh, lunch meat. So the lunch meat that we get comes in kind of hard plastic uh, packaging. So what I would do is I would take the chicken out of the plastic covering, put it in a Ziploc bag and put it in the cooler. It, would, it just helps save space a bit um, so we could have more chicken and more ice in the cooler. Also in the cooler, I had squeezable jelly and what we call fluff. So most fluff has egg in it and my allergic guy can't eat it, but we found that the Smucker's marshmallow topping 
is safe for him. So his brothers really like this more than he does. He's more of a, uh, I'll tell you, we also use sun butter. I buy this huge sun butter. I buy these um, on subscribe and save on Amazon and I get them. I don't even know what our subscribe and save is for it, but whatever, I always have them. Um, so we bring one of the sun butters with us. So my allergic guy usually likes sun butter and jelly. And one of my other guys likes sun butter and fluff. And my husband and I usually will just eat a devil ham or I'll have a sun butter and jelly. And my youngest guy will either drink a Pediasure drink. I know it has milk in it. We're well aware. We bring a plastic straw. He doesn't touch it. It's, he's very good at wiping and washing his hands or he'll eat the beef jerky. One last thing that I keep in my lunch bin is um, I'll keep some plastic knives in a Ziploc and then I have another Ziploc that I label used utensils and I'll wash those when we get to the hotel room that night. So that's how we handle lunch. Then the snacks. Okay, so snacks are crazy, right? Because I have three boys and they eat a lot and so I do the best I can with the meals but they do like to snack a lot in the car. So I did an order on box.com to get individually wrapped veggie straws, potato chips, um, fruit leather, uh, so many things. We had so many snacks. And then I had a box of Wheat Thins, Ritz, just some crackers, graham crackers, and a big container of pillow mints, which I dumped out on the ground at Little Grand Canyon in Lumpkin, Georgia. I was waiting for my husband and my boys to come back up to me where I was. And I opened the hatch of the car and pff, they came pouring out. And I had to like run around the parking lot. That was fun. Uh, but I find those are good, especially if you get a little woozy, a little car sick, you get a little upset belly, or you just need to pick me up. Little peppermint pillow mitts are awesome for that. I do also bring homemade food too. So I have another cooler that has in it what I call breakfast cookies. Actually, my son made a video about making these breakfast cookies. And if I can link it here, I will. If I can't put a link here, I will definitely put a link to it in the description. Um, he makes his, he made his breakfast cookie video a couple years ago, I think. Uh, I also bring homemade granola, oatmeal muffins, things like that, so that we have other munching things to eat in the car that are you know, good for them to eat. Now, I do bring extra food for the rest of us too, in case there's no place for us to eat a meal also. So usually in the morning, what we'll do is I will get up with my middle son and we'll go down to the hotel lobby to eat breakfast. And then I come back up to the hotel and my husband and my youngest son go down to the lobby to eat breakfast while I prepare and help my allergic guy have his lunch in the hotel room. I will bring a box of cereal, but like I said, I do have the granola and the breakfast cookies just in case the hotel does not have a breakfast for us to eat. I do bring a shelf-stable almond milk with us in the car just in case we do need to have cereal for breakfast if the hotel doesn't have a breakfast for us also. But we didn't need to go into this at all for this vacation. And then dinner, um, we can do the split dinner thing or my husband will run out and grab burgers or something and then bring it back to the room and we'll just eat in a very confined area. Again, I'll Clorox wipe everything, we'll wash all of our hands and everything. And that's just how we eat. That way I don't have to bring enough food, enough breakfast, lunch, and dinner for five people. I have to bring enough breakfast, lunch, and dinner for one person and then a little extra in case there's a meal that we need to eat. Like let's say we get in the hotel too late, we're too tired to run out and find. I don't, I like Abby's. Um, or something like that for us to quickly eat something fast. Um, it will have enough food for us to have at least something to eat. Not related to food, but my son also has eczema, different things can irritate his skin. We got him the sleep sack. It's super thin, can fold into this tiny little, I don't know, sack here. So it's really long. So it's basically a very thin sleeping bag that we lay on the bed. It's super thin. I'm trying to unzip it so you can see how thin it is. It's not thick at all. All it is is like a sheet material. It's a very um, smooth material of a sheet that's in the shape of a sleeping bag that has a space for your pillow. He does bring his own pillow also. So he has his own pillow. Whoops, sorry, I didn't make the noise. So he has his own pillow and that gets like caught up in this section up here. And then we lay this down on 
the bed so that his body is touching his sleep sack and not the bedding for the hotel in case the uh, detergents that they use or something is irritating to his skin. I do hope this helps if you're looking to travel with a child with food allergies, just get some ideas of how you can do it safely. I know some people with food allergies do eat in restaurants and that's fine and that's their choice. We choose not to eat at restaurants because of the severity of his allergies and we do just fine. So that's what I do to keep my food allergic guy safe when we are on a road trip or on a vacation. I will say that wet ones are really important also when you have an allergic kiddo because after using the bathroom um, sometimes I would tell him to just use wet ones if we forgot to bring in a soap with us into the restroom uh, because you can't trust soaps in public restrooms because they could have I've seen milk in uh, hand soaps before and you just can't trust it we don't need a problem so we use wet ones an awful lot too so these are all over our car in almost every single bag when we go on a road trip I hope some of these tips help you if you have a child that has food allergies and maybe you're hesitant to go on a vacation. We make it work. Anyway, so thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. Have a good day.